So once this thought hit, I entertained it because again, subconscious, here's the thing too, when this thought hit, it was a familiar thought from the past that was attached to a whole library of narratives and stories and playlists of narratives and stories and emotions from my emotionally unhealthy past. And and so it hit and now that once calm stream is a raging, ferocious, dangerous river. Welcome to the EQ Gangster Podcast, where you will learn practical tools to grow your mental and emotional health and intelligence to be the best version of yourself, both at work and at home. It is real, raw, and transformational. The journey of emotional growth isn't easy, but it's worth it. I believe in you. EQ Gangsters, what is up? So just, I'm on... (laughs) For my YouTube folks, you guys can see this, but I'm on the road going through a a truckload of Texas from doing some in-person on-site visits with a number of my clients that are based out of Texas, just past this cattle car, this semi-trailer cattle car. And the funny thing, and it's full of cattle, but here's why that's funny. The funny thing is, (laughs) <laughs> many, many moons ago when I was in the 82nd Airborne Division, which which is an organization that you get to work one of two ways, either by C-130, C-141, which are now phased out, I believe, or C-17s. That's one way we got to work was by jumping out of those babies onto the drop zone. But in order to get to the aircraft, we would take cattle cars. (laughs) They would literally load us up in cattle cars. Uh, Again, for for non-military, non-farming people, it's a semi-trailer built specifically for cattle. And paratroopers. <laughs> so, oh man, a little blast from the past right there. And, and let's say they're not built for comfort. <laughs> oh man, that's so funny. So, this episode is about my pretty intense last 24 hours. I was completely emotionally hijacked the last 24 hours. Now it lasted, let's see, maybe it lasted 12 to 18 hours. I don't know that it lasted a full, maybe it did last a full 24 hours. And I was on my road trip, making my rounds around all the way around Texas, all these different cities. And man, a, a thought hit my bean. Okay, so let me give you the analogy. So imagine you are standing, imagine you are standing on the bank of a big stream, small river. Maybe that, let's say that stream is, we'll just say for the conversation, 15 to 20 feet across. And you're standing there and it's it's middle of the day, middle of the afternoon, and the, the water is very calm. It's moving, but it's very calm, like no bubbles, no little babbling brook action, strictly calm, you know, what I normally say is calm as pond water, but it's a stream, so not quite pond water, stagnant, but nice easy moving you're looking you're standing on the on the bank of the 
stream and you're kind of taking it all in, looking across the, to the other bank, you're looking to the left and right, up and down the stream, watching the, the slow motion of the stream. Now, the analogy is that is my, my goal anyway, that is my emotional stasis. That's my emotional happy place is where the emotions in my stream are just nice and easy, bebopping along, smooth, calm, chill, predictable, stable, steady, and moving. Not stagnant, not stuffing, not avoiding, not damming the, the water up. Just nice and easy motion. Well, what happened <laughs> yesterday, a thought hit that stream and, and turned that stream into a raging river. Raging. <laughs> oh man, I'm, I'm talking intense. It was in, it, it was intense. And 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 here's the thing. It was it. So once this thought hit, I entertained it because again, subconscious. Here's the other thing too. When this thought hit, it was a familiar thought from the past that was attached to a whole library of narratives and stories and playlists of narratives and stories and emotions from my emotionally unhealthy past and and so it hit and now that once calm stream is a raging ferocious dangerous river and 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 I and, and I'm I am I am it is going. It is. It is going. And I am like, I'm in it. I'm, I jumped in and I am. I am riding this raging river and not surfing it. I am <laughs> I'm getting taken under. I come up for a little bit of air. I go back down, start to drown a little bit, come back up for a little bit of air. And you know, some, some very intense emotions that were attached to a number of different things, attached to my marriage, attached to my worth, my personal worth, attached to my identity, attached to my value, attached to behaviors. Atta I mean, deep, deep stuff, man. And so, I, I mean, I, yeah. And so, there were a, a couple instances throughout this undercurrent that took me, this, this hardcore riptide that took me underwater, the emotional water, so to speak, this raging river. There were times where I would come up for air, where I would start to get conscious, like, okay, whoa, whoa, wait a second. What, dude, what, what's going on here? Where I'd be like, dude, you, you are... And, and it was, I was in, like, I grabbed a root that was sticking out from the, 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 the bank, the river bank. And I was holding on for dear life for just a quick second, maybe a handful of seconds, 10, 20, 30 seconds. Where I was coming up, where I'd come up for air. Be like, dude, whoa. But listen, that, I, I was under... This rip current, this rage current, I mean, for probably a good 20 to 30 minutes, maybe an hour before I even 
was aware of what was going on because that rip current, that rage current was, it was like an old friend. I, now it had been a, a while since I had, since I had visited with that old friend, but there was a, a phase of my life where I had swam with that old friend for years. So I was, to say that it was familiar is an understatement. To say that it was comfortable, brutally comfortable, violently comfortable, violently comfortable, seductively comfortable, is an understatement. I mean, years that that library of narratives I had I had it was very familiar. So, which is why I think that I, I didn't recognize it. I didn't even notice that I was that I was sucked under for an hour because I was so familiar with it. But it, again, it had been a hot minute. I don't remember how long it's been. Maybe six months. Maybe a year. Maybe a couple years. I, I don't remember exactly. But it had been a while, and so. So boom, I finally grabbed this this vine. We call it wait a minute vine in the military. We grabbed this vine that was sticking out of the bank. I come up for air and I'm like, dude, you, you are you are way emotionally hijacked right now. You are so emotionally triggered right now. And literally, y'all, literally, then that would be the last thing I would remember, and I would lose grip from this root in the bank and I'd go right back into the raging rip current of these very intense, very strong, very dangerous, very comfortable and familiar and seductive current of emotions and feelings and thoughts. And for, again, no no exaggeration, y'all, for another, maybe another hour, and then boom, I, I slowly start to come to the surface. I see a wait a minute vine. I grab the wait a minute vine. I come back up for air. Dude, bro, you, dude, you, like you are, you are, you are getting sucked under by this, by this uh, rip current. And you, you need to, you need to figure out what's going on here. And I'd get a little bit further down with a little bit more oxygen, right? And then boom, I'd get sucked under again, pop back up 30 minutes, an hour later. Oh crap, I forgot. I was, I hadn't finished that last thought yet. But it, I, I can't tell you how slippery that branch was when I would come up for air. It was like I almost couldn't even finish a thought, a cognitive rational, logical thought to even ask myself, Noble, what's going on here? To even do a, 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 a legit analysis or audit of my feelings, thoughts, and emotions before I'd get sucked under again. And because again, it was so, so familiar to me. And again, violently comfortable. And so, boom, I'd come back up for another hour later. Noble, dude, what, what's going on? Where did this come from? You're not thinking clearly. You're not thinking logically. And then, boom, I'd go under again. So, and, and, and I'm telling you all, and, and, and here's the thing. By God's grace, I, and I, I, not, I am not joking around. By God's grace, I, I never acted on any of those old volumes of, of narratives and playlists by God's grace. When I but when I tell you I was I was I was I was under the current and getting swept around and thrown around by these old 
playlists and narratives, man, I am not joking. And, and, and like so much so that, you know, because part of me is like, okay, I need to reach out to to my wife or to somebody. But I'm like, man, I, I, I can't. Now, I don't know if, now maybe I talked myself out of it when I shouldn't have. But my rationalization was, man, if I reach out to somebody right now, they are legit going to think I am cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Like legit. And 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 I and I would not be in my reaching out, it would not be a rational reaching out. Does that make sense? Like it, you know, it, it would it would be a very emotional cry for help, which maybe maybe I should have done that, I, you know. But I I felt so out of control that I, I didn't feel comfortable in in, in reaching out uh, because of how out of control I felt. I I, I didn't feel like. Uh, yeah, anyway, so I, I need to think through that if I should have reached out, if I shouldn't have reached out. But it, it was, I, I'll tell you, one of the emotions was it was scary. It was it was a very, even though it was, it was a very uncomfortable, comfortable experience. Because again, it, it had been a, a while since I've been there. And again, that's from my old pre-EQ days. So that's why it was, I mean, the one side, the reason it was comfortable is because I, I mean, heck, I'd lived that way with the, with that going on for decades. The reason why I was uncomfortable is because it's been a while since I've spent that much time getting sucked under by some old, old stuff. Thankfully, as I slowly started to come to the surface... Thankfully, I gave myself a lot of grace and patience and curiosity rather than pre-EQ days, I would have eviscerated myself for even allowing myself to get pulled back under, number one, and getting pulled back under for that length of time, number two, and for getting pulled that far under number three. So again, so that's a W is that I didn't eviscerate myself. I didn't beat myself up for for having the experience. Now, I, I, I obviously I wanna learn from it and I wanna improve on it so that if and when it happens again, you know, I don't go under for that long and for that intensely, and I'm able to surf on top of those emotions and feelings rather than get carried under water by those uh, uh, feelings and emotions. So, so, and, and I, and I want to learn, like, what what happened, like, what on earth you know, what was that all about? And, and, and you know, th- there are definitely some triggers that, that I have identified. Um, some legit, meaning they, 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 one of them was not unfounded. Now, again, the degree to which obviously I elevated was, was something that I need to work on. But that's also a clue for me and a sign for me that clearly I have more work to do in a couple of these specific areas because clearly it is still very, very raw, injured, and painful because of the intensity of of the experience. Uh, you know, there, and, and I went through a number of, of very intense emotions. I mean, for for a for a, 
a good chunk of time for multiple hours, it was back to the old, I hated myself. Despite, like, I, I don't know, like, what in your life have you ever hated more than anything else in your life? That's the level of hate that I hated myself. And, and, and again, for many years, you know, again, pre-EQ days, and again, it happened again last night for a few hours. And, you know, it's, you know, that's an intense, that's a very intense experience. So, and, and, and the blessing again, so, you know, shared some of the blessing and when, when I was kind of starting to come to the surface and the, the raging riptide started to slow down a little bit where I could reach to the a branch or a vine so I could come up for air. I, I was, after I slept on it and, and, and woke up and kind of evaluated a little bit more, which was another factor, fatigue is another factor in our ability and or inability to process our emotions and feelings. For me, it becomes exponentially more difficult and challenging to process, to acknowledge, identify, and process, and manage my emotions when I am fatigued. Exponentially more difficult. And I would argue that I, I don't even, I can't even do it at this phase in my life. I, 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 I'm, I'm terrible at best at, at doing that when I am fatigued. Once I did wake up and again, was able to, to, to process my emotions after, again, getting air and, and being in a lot better spot mentally and emotionally, uh, then, then uh, I, I was able to communicate where I was at a a lot more safely and and non-threateningly, which I am very grateful for because again, normally when I'm in that spot, it's it's very un, I'm very unsafe, and not just for me. I'm in, I'm unsafe for me, but I'm unsafe for anybody that gets close to me, or or that I or that I interact with during that when I am underwater emotionally and I'm emotionally hijacked and emotionally triggered, I, I, I'm not safe to be around. And it's scary. It's scary. It's, and I'm, I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm not proud of, of, of sharing all this stuff. It's embarrassing is, is one of those, is one of those emotions that pops up. It's embarrassing. It's, uh, yeah, embarrassing. It's exposing. It's, I feel a little bit of shame. It's a little bit shameful. But I just, I want to be real also, obviously in my journey with you all, whoever listens to this stuff or watches this stuff and hopes that it may help you or may help maybe somebody that you know who has struggled with this. And, and I'm also thankful that this doesn't happen. I mean, y'all, this used to happen on a weekly basis. This is This was literally my life for a decade or two pre-EQ. So to, to say that I'm grateful that this, this, you know, again, I don't remember the last time it happened, maybe a, a year or two ago. It, it's an understatement. I'm so grateful. So great. So there's a lot of things to be thankful for, but I also want to let you know when I, when I fall and, 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 and fail and still struggle and not just share, oh, hey, I've got another victory here or another win, but I, I want to share the losses also and, and like, hey, I'm still working on this stuff, very much so. Uh, so thank you. Love you guys. I believe in you. Your emotional health and freedom and emotional fitness is worth the heavy lifting to achieve it. And give yourself grace, space, curiosity, intention, patience along that journey, it is so worth it. Emotionally healthy people help heal other people emotionally. 
if if this blessed you or or added value to you or maybe you know someone else please thank you for your for rating reviewing sharing subscribing thank you for watching on youtube listening on on the podcast platform whatever you're on and just very grateful for you